All right, on to one of my more favorite subjects in real estate and has to do with Donnie, do I buy new construction or do I buy something that exists? In my world, it's called resale. There's been years where, you know, blanketly, the right decision is buy new construction. If you're thinking about making a deal on, on an investment that you think would carry you for the next few years, new construction was an amazing opportunity. And uh, I think over the years, that's really shifted. And today, where we are in 2020, when you're considering where to put your investment dollars, and you're thinking about condos, I'm not so sure that new construction is the way to go. And I'll get into that in this video. I think it's important to understand that there's a lot of similarities when you're buying new construction and when you're buying resale condos. Same concepts apply when that there's going to be a deposit. There's going to be you know a lot of factors that go into buying real estate. It's got nothing to do with what it is you're buying, just the concept and decision to put a lot of money towards a real estate purchase where you're putting down generally 20% of the purchase price down and you're going to finance the rest of it. That all applies the exact same way, whether it's new or resale. And things like transfer taxes, which are big in Toronto, because we have twice as much, unfortunately, in the 416, those apply again, same way. When you have a lawyer who's going to close on a transaction for you, same cost. You know, regardless of how you've signed, for whichever kind of purchase, you're going to have to deal with those specific costs independently of whether or not you're buying new or resale. So that was apply. The big difference on the cost end of things really is in new construction. There's a whole whack of things that go above and beyond what you can expect if you're buying resale. Things like Tarion, the warranty program that builders are obligated to participate in. And so are you as a first time buyer of this project. You're obligated to purchase a Tarion warranty package. Depending on what you buy, the size and all that stuff, who knows, uh, could be a couple grand. There are many incidental fees that are that go above and beyond, again, resale stuff. So this is the first time that you've had a hydro hookup, possibly, in the condo, in the unit. First time, maybe if you have a gas meter, all these, all these individual meters and installations, they all come at a cost and all of those costs are passed on to the eventual purchaser of the unit. Okay, so these are these are some small numbers, sure, but they do add up. The biggest, the biggest category of costs that are specific to new construction is in this thing called development charges and educational levies. So when a city decides to grant this builder the opportunity to build you know, this massive structure on this lot that was previously used for something that was very small scale, there's implications in the decision. The city might say, look, you're going from a building that housed 20 people to now housing you know, 2,000 people. Well, we need to change the way that we've run our sewer lines and water supply and the, the width of the sidewalk and alleyways, whatever, whatever the case may be, but all those costs all those trade-offs that the builder has to make in order to accomplish all these things, all those costs get passed down to the buyers again. Now, if you're going in and buying a condo, just a regular person off the street into a new condo sales center, and you're, you, know, you love the shine and the shimmer of that product and you signed, you might not realize that you could probably have set an upper limit, a cap on how much that could possibly be. But we realtors, when we're helping clients buy properties, buy new condos in Toronto, you know, we generally know that's one of the things that we first things we ask for is a development charge cap. We want to know there's an upper limit as to how much you're going to charge us or our clients. The number has definitely changed over the years. So different for each project, but is it unreasonable to see six, seven grand all the way to 20 grand as an upper cap? Totally normal. And that is again, above and beyond what you agreed to pay. Next, if you are an investor, and we work with a lot of investors that help them build their wealth through property acquisition, there's HST implications to the buyer. So not only are you paying you know, 499, that's, that's what you agreed to buy, you gotta, play, you gotta pay an additional amount of HST above that. Now it's not a straight 13%, there's some math behind this, some HST is already included in that number, but there's another big payment due for HST 
when you are ready to close on the transaction. There's a program with the CRA that, you know, that is designed to give you back a lot of that HST. But in the meanwhile, you might have to front 30, 40 grand at the very end. Okay, before you see any payments from any renters or whatever, you might have to front that money as an investor for a period of at least a few months while you're waiting for the government to send you back a rebate for the amount you're gonna to have to front. All right, that's all fine and dandy. These, these are all costs. This is the cost angle of things. Where I wanna go with this really though, is less about the cost of closing, transactional costs, and more along the lines of price per square foot. How much does this condo cost relative to what's available? And that's where I'm seeing a really large gap at the moment in Toronto. I do firmly believe in real estate as an investment. There's just countless reasons why it makes sense. And the amazing things it's done for me personally, my family, as well as the clients that we have. Okay, so I'm, I'm not, not gonna bash real estate at all. What I will say is, if there are two projects, two condo buildings, across the street from each other, side by side, whatever, one is new, and one is 10 years old. The one that's 10 years old, if you did the math, and looked at you know, the numbers for the building, you're looking at a price per square foot in this building, maybe it's $1,000 a square foot. So if you were buying a 500 square foot, you know, if you were buying a 500 square foot unit, maybe it cost you $500,000 to buy that unit. What we're seeing on the new construction side is builders are pricing units for sale at numbers that are future driven. They're, they're priced at $1,300, $1,400 a square foot in this example. And it's not uncommon. Like we are absolutely seeing that gap, 20, 30, 40% premium to buy new construction on top of all those costs I just went over. So as an investor who's always focused on how much money is this going to make me, even if I'm living there, there should be a huge investment um, concept, a huge investment focus happening in your mind when you're buying new construction. I just don't see the numbers. They don't make sense. Especially if I'm going to, I'm going to give you my money for my deposit. I'm going to wait four years. The money that I've given you has probably cost me money to get. Maybe I'm borrowing from myself, for example, or I've withdrawn from my savings, which means that this money is not earning interest or, or appreciating uh, in any matter at all. It's sitting in the it's sitting in the deposit. I haven't paid down anything that I owe on this property, and I'm waiting for four years. And I'm banking on four years, you know, the market doing some great things, which it may, but there's some speculation behind that as well. If I didn't do that and I moved this money into something that exists right now, the resale world, bought a condo that is at a discount compared to what's new. Um, I can definitely select a tenant or buy a place that is tenanted right now, or I could choose from my own place, for example. Um, I can I know exactly what I'm buying. I know what the view's like. I know if the garbage dumpster is under my balcony. I got all these things, I can see these things. Um, there's a lot of reasons why I prefer, I would prefer that scenario. The big one for sure is the price. Like I'd rather pay a discount for a similar kind of condo in the same neighborhood. As time goes on, let's just say the new one is, is built now. Okay, so we're, we're there now and all these investors and all these, these buyers that bought up the units for sale from the builder, I know what they paid. They paid a premium to what I would have had on the resale side for a comparable-ish condo, right? This guy is going to help raise the, the price of my condo because buyers who are looking at resale at that time We'll, we'll look and pick and feel and say, oh, well, this this makes sense that I like this neighborhood and you know the amenities here are great. Um, you know, I may not need all of that. I'd love to have what's beautiful and sexy and new and all that, but this one's a pretty good option as well. And if I can get that at 10% of a discount to what this is, then I think I prefer that for right now. So I feel like later on in the future, this might take some more time to appreciate, but the one that's next to it that is a little bit cheaper is gonna end up doing some bigger things on its return over the years. The advice that I'm giving a lot of times to the clients that, that we're working with, and it's building specific, of course, is generally, 
I wouldn't really look towards new construction if I was placing my money today on a condo investment. If I was buying a condo for myself. Now I might decide that, you know, for personal reasons, I want that building. I love the look of it. I love the location. I love who's doing it. All these things. And that could very well happen. But I understand that I'd be paying a premium to get exactly what I want. Different story, guys. I guess that makes sense to me. Okay, there's 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 factors at play that go beyond the economics of the whole thing. But in general, as an investor, and I can't pull out the investor part of my brain, I am generally staying hands off on new construction these days for the reasons I just went over. From time to time, there are some projects that I just that I come across, that come across my desk, and I'm just excited about. And because the prices are more in line with what I feel is fair, when that happens, Oh, I'm all in. Like I'm, I'm big on those kind of projects and new construction. I got no problem with it being new. It's just my experience saying, looking around the market and what I'm seeing for sale and what it costs. Just not gonna. I'm not ready to put my money in that market. And I'm advising my clients to avoid that as well and go towards something that they can get assurances today resale, where they can get a tenant immediately in place, paying down what is owed. Hope that helps your understanding of new construction in Toronto for 2020.